What is more appropriate for this dumpster fire of a year than the Grinch stealing Christmas? Now, this is not an original idea. I wish I was that cool, but I've seen this before. I wanted to do this for a long time, but every cutout I could find on the internet was either like flimsy cardboard or uh, small, like four foot tall Grinch cutouts. And that's not what I wanted. If you watch the original, um, the original movie or the book, the Grinch is a big dude. So I figured this had to be out of a full eight foot sheet plywood. So let me walk you through how I did this. Well, I started with my favorite picture of the, the Grinch that, that I found just on a Google image search. And I'm, I'm not really artistic, so I had to figure out how I was gonna lay this whole thing out on an eight foot sheet of plywood. So I started just looking at this kind of semicircle here and I know I'm about six foot tall just just shy of six foot and from the bottom of my tailbone to the back of my neck is about 36 inches or so give or take so I figured this needed to be at least 40 maybe 42 I think I wound up going with with 42 so I lay that out on the plywood and I start working just kind of sketching everything in from there after I have the whole thing laid out in pencil, I come back with a Sharpie and start making more confident uh, lines. And you know, I'm not an artist. It's really a miracle this thing turned out as good as it did. Honestly, there were many times where I thought I was just gonna have to throw this whole thing in the trash because it was out of proportion and lines weren't lining up, but I just kept getting after it. And um, the face turned out really well, so uh, I built some confidence and, and just kept going until it, I was happy with the result. Um, if you're struggling with this, I don't really have any advice to give you because I honestly have no idea what I'm doing, but give it a shot, you know, you might surprise yourself. And by the way, I'm using 3 8 plywood here. I probably could have gone with half inch. Um, it definitely wouldn't go with anything smaller, but this was 40 bucks and that's all I wanted to spend on it. Speaking of cheap, I was trying not to spend any more money on paint, so I had this leftover Rust-Oleum uh, with the black, the white, and the red. The red was a little too red, so I mixed that with a couple droplets of black and made this nice Christmas red. And then uh, I did have to spend about 20 bucks on um, the green. I just had the local hardware store color match that. And if you do wind up mixing, hand mixing any paint, uh, save enough, uh, you know, make enough for the whole project and save the excess and don't go digging through the trash when you need touch-ups like I did. I also thought this oil base would eliminate the need for primer and I had good coverage on the, the black and the red, the white I actually had to do multiple coats and of course the green was a latex so it took multiple coats as well. Um, you can see I've already painted the eyes yellow and I didn't mention that because it didn't turn out good and I tried to fix it with uh, with white later and it, it was just a waste of time so I wouldn't even bother with the, the yellow on the eyes. Most people don't notice the difference. As I paint the rest of this red and white and, and green, I'm trying to leave these Sharpie lines because it defeats the purpose of covering the lines if you can't see them to come back and, and do all the black um, outlining later. At this point, it's starting to look really damn good and I'm actually impressed with myself. Once all the color dries, I come back to do the black outlining. Um, but I didn't have like an artist brush or anything, so I cut about three quarters of the bristles out of a disposable just to have like a finer tool. I also laid the plywood flat so I didn't have to worry about paint running. I did get some drips in some places though, so you know don't put the touch up or don't put the other colors away. You will need it uh, for touch up. Now I'm making sure that I cover all of the colors and uh, on the plywood I'm making these lines thick enough that I can, you know, I have some wiggle room when I actually start cutting the outline of this thing later. This was probably my favorite part. I mean, the, the black just makes the whole thing pop and I got to kind of see how great it was gonna turn out. Again, you'll wanna let this completely dry before the next step and that's actually cutting the outline. I put some masking tape on my uh, jigsaw to try and help with scarring, but it's still scratched in a couple places. There's just not much you can do about it. I had some scrap 1x2s that were actually treated and painted white, so I used these just to build the supports and drive some stakes in the ground to hold them up. 
I actually come back later and spray paint these black just because the white stood out so much. I'm just tacking this together with a nail gun. I wasn't exactly sure if it was going to be permanent in this spot when I put it together, um, but I would probably use screws if I did this again. That way I could take it apart easily and, and reuse it. I'm using sandbags and uh, some fishing string to secure the lights on the roof since it's a flat roof and I don't have any anchor points. Um, I didn't want to put screws or anything up there either, so I just string these lights together and wrap around his hand. I didn't need any ties or anything for that. All in all, I think this turned out really awesome. I just need to add some up lighting and um, maybe next year I'll, I'll do a big sleigh or max the dog or something like that. Anyway, thanks for watching. Hope you all enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next video.